The Paris Agreement, signed in 2016, had an ambitious target of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2050. Later, in July 2023, the International Maritime Organization, IMO, declared its commitment to ensure net zero from the shipping industry by 2050. Despite the challenges of making shipping environmentally friendly, the maritime industry is making significant progress and improvements. My name is Mark Bell. I'm the General Manager for SGMF, and we exist to encourage best practices used across the industry for a safe and sustainable shipping industry. Climate change is perhaps the foremost challenge for humanity today. As the global population keeps growing, global shipping will increase proportionately, and total emissions will also increase. That's why we need to use much more of the cleaner compliant fuels we have now, such as LNG, but also accelerate progress towards the green methanol and green ammonias. SGMF is a membership-based organization. And apart from the groundwork that we do in terms of best practice publications and guidance outputs from the society, it is very important for us to collaborate both within the industry and outside with other sectors. Events like this allow members to get together and come up with creative solutions to the problem. The society itself is formed by over 150 global members. This is a membership-based forum and it's a chance for members to congregate and discuss, present solutions to each other, but also learn from each other. At MSC, we're looking to build as much flexibility into our fleet to match its profile of 800 container vessels on the water operating on 300 trade routes. We also have around two dozen cruise ships, two dozen row packs, and two dozen high-speed craft, and even a few bulk carriers thrown into the mix. So for us, fuel flexibility and being adaptable to different bunkering markets is really key. So with that type of fleet profile, with fuel flexibility at its core, we're looking at multiple types of fuels to serve our decarbonization needs into the future. VT Group is a barge operator, so we operate and own inland barges, but also seagoing bunker barges in Rotterdam, Panama and Spain, and we also do maritime logistics of chemicals over the River Rhine. Back in 2014, I was a member of the first working group within SGMF, looking after quality and quantity measurements for LNG. That was back with a previous employer, and over the years I've always stayed in touch with SGMF, as the choice of new fuels and especially the guidance of the market in that has always been in my interest. As a company, we firmly believe in promoting green shipping for a better maritime future. That involves also transition to the various alternate marine fuels. Ultimate aim is to achieve decarbonization. We are managing 670 plus ships under full technical management. That includes bulk carriers, car carriers, container vessels, chemical carriers, oil tankers, gas carriers, cruise ships, heavy lift carriers, and even tugboats as well. Antin Vader is a shipping company. Um, and we call that an integrated shipping company because all the ships that we have is in our own ownership. Uh, so we have 32 at the moment and we do also commercial management and technical management. That means that all the crewing is on our payrolls and we also do uh, technical management of the vessels. I'm specifically working on the implementation of ammonia as a fuel uh, within the maritime industry. As such, I'm also a board member within SGMF. Ten years ago, we were uh, ready to help SGMF to support the organization in order to develop the standards uh, uh, for uh, safe operations of uh, ships relying on gas. There are already uh, LNG bunkering ships existing, capable of bunkering uh, ocean going vessels. So it means that a solution is existing today. In some ways, shipping is very much like aviation in that the ships have to take their fuel with them 
and provide their own power for propulsion and services on board. The shipping industry is a vital component of global trade. There are approximately 60,000 merchant ships in operation worldwide, carrying approximately 92% of the world's trade. By volume, the shipping industry uses more than 300 million tonnes of fossil fuels every year, and that's roughly 5% of global oil production. So if shipping keeps doing business as usual, its contribution to greenhouse gases will increase significantly from the current 3%. These fuels are no longer over the horizon, they're in sight, but we have to speed up progress towards them. So within the maritime industry, there's multiple options to decarbonize. So if you are burning ammonia on board of your vessel, you are effectively decarbonizing a lot rather than moving around the CO2 molecule. And I think that is the biggest differentiator for ammonia, that it doesn't contain CO2. So ammonia is a very scalable product in the sense that it is already produced and shipped on a global scale already today. So that can be implemented in the new markets as well to ensure security of supply, availability of the molecule. There is no perfect fuel available. However, there are various options available. It depends upon the ship owner where they would like to invest in which kind of technology, what kind of fuel they would like to choose. Maybe in coming future, nuclear fuel may be a reality to achieve decarbonization, but we are far away from there now. Many do not realize that one of the first reasons that LNG was attractive as a marine fuel was that it was abundant and sometimes relatively cheap. Besides the fact that LNG already lowers the emissions today, it's also a door opener for greener versions in the future, so even further improving the emission reduction. Now we see this big boom coming, that uh, there's larger consumers uh, making use of that. That also had to do with regulations, sulfur regulations that came in play. Adoption of LNG uh, went not so fast um, and we hope that it was going at a much faster pace. A lot of ships coming to the market that are being delivered, almost over a thousand that are capable of using LNG as a fuel. And we really need to build on more bunker infrastructure, more bunker vessels to supply, uh, supply all those vessels. So it's really kicking off and I think that the success of SGMF uh, really contributed to that. So that is something to be very proud of. Despite LNG being a fossil fuel, it is the simplest hydrocarbon molecule and that is why it burns so cleanly. That efficiency can lead to a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions right now for shipping by up to 23%. In essence, it's all about striking a balance between the advantages of natural gas whilst addressing the concerns for a sustainable transition in the whole maritime sector. So, ammonia is already globally produced today and globally shipped today. So there's a lot of lessons learned that can be taken from that part of the value chain to ensure successful application and implementation within the maritime industry. So it's really looking at the best practices, understanding the current safety um, you know, engineering, etc., on ammonia and implementing that, translating that to the maritime industry. And this is where the role of SGMF is essential. With many small steps, we can also climb the decarbonization ladder. People are really trusting uh, the uh, gas as a solution for reducing the emissions of fuel. That's what SGMF has achieved over the past 10 years, and it's very important. We're going to need all the fuels we can get if the industry is to meet its net zero by 2050 target. That not only means adequate fuel production and bunkering infrastructure to ensure availability of synthetic and bioforms, but also making sure they are safe to bunker and operate on the vessel itself. SGMF has made significant contributions in terms of safe LNG bunkering, transfer and engine operation, and they're now translating that knowledge and experience that's been gained into other types of advanced fuels as well. As we ramp up the adoption of alternative fuels, SGMF's contribution will be even more important in making sure that above all, these next generation fuels are safe for our seafarers to operate on board their ships. Progress within the industry is assured through continued communication, but also continued collaboration. The good news about maritime decarbonisation is that it is possible. 
SGMF is at the forefront of making that pathway and those decisions as clear as possible for the industry. There are some question marks on the way, but it's important that an organisation like this answers those questions, fills the gaps and looks towards meeting those climate change challenges.